Long before the era of social media influencers and viral sensations, there existed a captivating presence that resonated through the golden age of Hollywood Patricia Morrison. Whether you first encountered her on the silver screen or stumbled upon her timeless performances later in life, there's a certain nostalgia that accompanies the mention of her name. It's a sentiment that transports you to the bygone days of classic cinema, perhaps evoking the echo of a distant memory. Now, let's rewind the mental tape a bit and dust off the attic of recollections. What was your initial brush with Patricia Morrison? Was it the flickering black and white scenes of a film, or the subtle charm of a character she effortlessly brought to life? For many, it's a journey back to the roots of cinematic appreciation, a moment when Patricia Morrison became more than just a name on the credits. As we delve into the pages of her life, let's uncover some random facts that paint a vivid picture of this enigmatic actress. After all, understanding the person behind the roles adds layers to the cinematic experience. So, fasten your seatbelts as we embark on a journey through the lesser-known facets of Patricia Morrison's Lifiatch Tidbit, a pixel in the larger mosaic of her remarkable career. And here's where the story truly begins, where the real meets reality, and where Patricia Morrison's legacy unfolds before us. Patricia Morrison, last adversary of Sherlock Holmes Patricia Morrison, a luminary of both stage and screen, holds a unique place in the annals of cinema history. In the classic Universal series of Sherlock Holmes films, she etched her name as the final foe faced by the iconic detective. Her portrayal of a villain marked the end of an era in the Holmesian cinematic universe. Beyond the realm of detective tales, Morrison's life and career encompassed a rich tapestry of achievements. In 1948, she made a pivotal decision to leave behind the glitz of Hollywood and return to the stage. This move proved to be the catalyst for her greatest triumph. Renowned composer Cole Porter, impressed by Morrison's vocal prowess, handpicked her for the lead role in Kiss Me, Kate. The Broadway production catapulted her to stardom as she embodied the imperious Lily Venasi, a character whose volatility mirrored her own. Kiss Me, Kate resonated with audiences, featuring memorable tunes such as I Hate Men, Wonderbar, and So In Love. Morrison's chemistry with co-star Alfred Drake further solidified the play's success. The production ran on Broadway for an impressive 1,077 performances, from December 30, 1948, to July 28, 1951. Morrison's triumph extended across the Atlantic, with a notable stint in the London production, which endured for 400 performances. Morrison's journey was not confined to the stage and screen. Her final chapter unfolded in a serene yet poignant setting. Upon her passing, she entrusted her remains to the Neptune Society, choosing cremation and having her ashes scattered at sea. In this quiet act, Morrison departed as she had lived a woman of distinction and grace. Patricia Morrison's legacy, marked by her role as the last adversary of Sherlock Holmes and her resounding success in Kiss Me, Kate, encapsulates a career that spanned genres and continents. Her impact endures in the echoes of her performances and the cinematic history she helped shape. Patricia Morrison, a versatile performer, took an unexpected turn in her career trajectory. A chance encounter at Scheherazade, a nightclub where her brother worked as a lounge singer, altered the course of her life. On New Year's Eve, while singing a Russian ballad, a pianist overheard her and suggested, Patrushinka, I would arrange to study voice. Seizing this opportunity, he became her teacher, marking the beginning of Morrison's contemplation of a singing career. From 1961 onwards, Morrison, never married and childless, made her home at the Park La Brea apartment complex in Los Angeles. In a city known for glitz and glamour, she led a private and independent life in this residential enclave. Amidst the global turmoil of World War II in 1942, the United States found itself embroiled in the conflict. Morrison, like many other celebrities, contributed to the war effort by entertaining American troops and their allies. In November of that year, she joined luminaries such as Al Jolson, Merle Obron, Alan Jenkins, and Frank McHugh on a USO tour in Great Britain, bringing a touch of home and entertainment to servicemen far from American shores. Patricia Morrison's journey from a chance singing opportunity to entertaining troops during a world war reflects the unexpected paths that life can take. Her commitment to her craft and service to the nation make her a noteworthy figure in the annals of entertainment history. 
1948, Patricia Morrison faced a pivotal career decision. About to leave Hollywood for New York to take on the lead role in Cole Porter's musical Kiss Me, Kate, Morrison was taking a risk. Porter hadn't produced a hit show in years. On the eve of her departure, Louis B. Mayer, a powerful Hollywood mogul, proposed to Morrison, promising wealth. Wisely, she declined, a move that proved beneficial. A longtime resident of Los Angeles, Morrison called Miracle Miles Park La Brea Apartments home for over 50 years. During this time, she delved into painting, dedicating weekends to a portrait of Lily Messinger, an MGM story consultant. Messinger introduced Morrison to Louis B. Mayer, inviting her to Sunday dinners at Mayer's home, followed by a film. When Messinger revealed Mayer's affection for Morrison, along with a $100,000 proposal and showcase jewelry, Morrison declined, uninterested, and finding such a proposition insulting. Patricia Morrison's life choices reflected not only her commitment to her craft, but also her ability to navigate Hollywood's complex landscape. In the face of tempting offers and powerful suitors, Morrison pursued her artistic ambitions, proving that success often involves saying no to the expected paths. In 1960, during the production of Song Without End, director George Cukor found Patricia Morrison's voice, cast as George Sand, too feminine for the character. Consequently, he opted to redub her lines with another actress. This decision highlighted the director's pursuit of a specific vocal quality for the role, underscoring the meticulous nature of film production during that era. Patricia Morrison's familial background adds a layer of intrigue to her life. Her mother, Selena Morrison, served in British intelligence during World War I. This association with wartime intelligence work provides a glimpse into the historical context that shaped Morrison's early years and hints at the complexities of her family background. Aside from her acting prowess, Morrison possessed a full mezzo-soprano vocal range. This musical ability added versatility to her performances and showcased her multifaceted talents in the entertainment industry. In conclusion, Patricia Morrison's career in film was marked not only by her acting skills, but also by the nuanced challenges faced during production, as seen in the redubbing incident. Moreover, her family's involvement in wartime intelligence adds a layer of historical significance to her personal narrative. The combination of her acting and musical talents, alongside these intriguing aspects of her life, contributes to the complexity of Patricia Morrison's legacy in the world of entertainment. Patricia Morrison, a luminary of Hollywood's golden age, passed away shortly before Kirk Douglas and Olivia de Havilland, marking the end of an era. As one of the last survivors from that illustrious period, Morrison's legacy spans both film and theater, a duality she acknowledged with gratitude, stating, I really had two careers, one in film and one in the theater. I was lucky. In addition to her screen success, Morrison's early years saw her delve into the world of dance under the tutelage of Martha Graham. Simultaneously, she held a distinct role as a dress shop designer at Russick's department store. This unique combination of artistic pursuits reflects Morrison's versatility and commitment to her craft. Morrison's journey through Hollywood's heyday, coupled with her dual careers and dedication to various artistic expressions, offers a poignant glimpse into a bygone era. Her passing, aligned with contemporaries Douglas and de Havilland, marks the end of an epoch that defined the silver screen. As we draw the curtain on this exploration of Patricia Morrison's illustrious career, let's take a moment to delve into our personal connection with this extraordinary performer. In the tapestry of entertainment, Morrison's contributions have woven an enduring legacy that transcends time. Now, dear reader, it's your turn to step into the spotlight. Reflect on the moments when Morrison's performances stirred something within you. Was it the cadence of her voice, the way she commanded the stage, or perhaps a character that etched itself into your memory? Share your cherished memories, your thoughts, for in these shared reflections, we breathe life into the rich tapestry she crafted. The beauty of Morrison's artistry lies not only in the characters she portrayed, but in the emotions she evoked. Whether through the silver screen or the theatrical stage, her impact reverberates through the annals of entertainment history. As you walk down the memory lane of her performances, consider the nuances that made her unforgettable to you. In celebrating Patricia Morrison, we celebrate the magic of storytelling, the ability of an artist to transport us to worlds unknown. 
Your recollections become a part of this collective celebration, a testament to the enduring power of her craft. As we bid adieu to this exploration, we extend our gratitude to you for sharing in this journey. Thank you for your time, your reflections, and your appreciation of Patricia Morrison's indelible mark on the world of entertainment. Your presence enriches the legacy she leaves behind. Until we meet again in the realms of artistic wonder, let the memories linger and the stories endure.